Greetings hobbyists, this is our Sansa Vol, and welcome to the fourth follow through video on making a base for Adeptus Titanicus, or for any other game for that matter. In this video, we're going to have a look at bringing our mesh together and making sure that it's suitable for 3D printing without errors. So we left off our last video with our scene that we're going to cut our bases from looking like this. We've done our battle damage and at the moment we've got this massive egg shaped object here, which is going to be a blast that's being taken out of this section of the scene. And then we can cut our bases from this. Now, before we start bringing things together, this is the point to start doing some final checks on if you are happy with everything. Otherwise, at this point, everything's going to get a little bit problematic to change. So the first thing I'm going to do is have a look at the things that are most likely to go wrong. And normally the thing to start with is any things that potentially could be difficult in terms of scale. So I'm always going to start this with my stairs, I think. And actually, having looked at this, if we move this down, and this was our representative model of how tall a person would be, these steps are looking a bit big. And while we do want to exaggerate for Adeptus Titanicus a bit, just to make sure everything's clear, this is probably a bit much. So let's fix that straight away. So I'm going to select this block, which still is whole. I'm going to press S and Z. We can scale this on our Z axis, either to make it bigger or a bit smaller. And I think we need to go a bit smaller. So this is only on the vertical axis, and that is looking a bit more step-like. Now we're going to have to reposition everything with that. So let's make sure we're doing that. So we're going to turn our snapping on, make sure we're in edge mode. And we're going to G and Z to the edge and have another look at our stairs. That's looking a bit better. And we're going, now we're going to have one more issue with this. And that is actually that this, while the step looks the same now, because we're going to add a millimeter on top of it because of that part there, that's going to look too big. So actually we're going to go into this, go into face mode, isolate it with a forward slash key, select all the faces on the top not in face mode let's click on that to be in face mode select all the faces g z and then we want to go minus one to bring it down by a millimeter and that will look much better let's go back into object mode select all of our objects that are at the top so we need to select that our rail our little sort of banister bits same on this side and if we go to the side, we can start bringing those down. That's at the back. Either way, it doesn't make a bad difference. And we're going to G and Z. And I would normally snap this, but this isn't going to work. And I'll show you why. If I bring snapping on, make sure it's on edge mode. If I press G and Z, you'll notice it sort of snaps to other points now. Okay, it can get a bit problematic when you're selecting multiple objects. So G and Z. Let's bring it down to about there. Let's just check that's not causing a problem with this step. No, there we go. That looks fine. So that's looking much better, a bit more to scale and a bit more correct in terms of size. Now, the next thing we want to check is for really obvious issues. And there are actually going to be some on mine. They might not be on yours. It depends exactly how your Booleans worked when you were doing them. But it is always worth checking this. Now the first thing I like to do is have a general quick check for faces that are the wrong way around. And you'd be surprised how many errors this can cause when bringing meshes together. It is the bane of a 3D modeler's existence. So to check that, we go up to this top section for overlays and we want face orientation and everything should be blue. And right away, this is really easy to see, there's two big fat issues there and there where one of these Boolean cuts was. So we're gonna have a look at how to fix those. Now I don't like keeping that on, it's really annoying, so I'm gonna turn it off. But if I go into this and tab in, okay, you can sort of see this by this slightly different coloration here, but it is relatively quick to fix. If I select A to select everything in there, all I need to do is go to Mesh, Normals, and then Recalculate Outside. And if I then come off of this, and click face orientation, you'll see that's now fixed, which is a nice, easy way of doing it. Right, let's have another look around the rest of this model. And we're looking all right at the moment, actually. So no issues with face orientation. Let's turn that off so it's not just sitting there being blue. 
So that's our first action. Next, we need to start bringing things together. And while we can do this manually, each time selecting the main object, so for example, these stairs, add modifier, and then using Boolean, and we would want to union them instead of difference them, that is really slow and tedious. So we're actually gonna activate an add-on. Now, if you've already been to my settings video, you might already have this activated, which is great. If not, you can see it, how to do it now, or if you want to have a look at even more settings to look at, you can have a look at that video, it's in the descriptions. So we're gonna to need to go to edit and preferences, and then we're gonna to come to add-ons. Now this add-on is called ball tools, so B-O-O-L. Select that, and all that does is activate some shortcuts that makes life much faster. So instead of going to this modifier menu, we can just use control and either plus to add something together or minus to take it apart. Now this is the first thing that some experience taught me. At the moment, this tile, because we've got all the tiles as one object, if I come here and go into vertex mode, it's more obvious. Now if we try to do anything with this, this tile here is gonna cause massive problems because at the moment, it's part of the same object, but it's intersecting with the other tiles. And basically Blender doesn't like that, it gets too confused. So we're gonna to have to fix that. So I'm gonna click on one of the vertexes, press L and notice it's only selected the linked vertices. And then we're gonna separate this out. So P, which activates separate, and then selection. And now the tiles are one object and that loose tile is another one. We've got another one of these tiles that we moved over here. So we're gonna to have to do the same for this one. So select these tab. And actually usually it's the last one that we did, but if it wasn't, I'm just gonna click all just to demonstrate. Click on one of the vertices, L to bring all the linked things together, P for the separate and then selection. And now that's a separate part. So let's get going with this. Now, you can in theory select all the things you want to add together and use this shortcut and it should bring it all together nicely. But experience has told me Blender makes many less errors if you do this bit by bit. And there's several things that you can do together, but generally you want to do this almost in layers of what attaches to what. So the first thing is we've got these tiles and we want to join them together to this main object here. So we're gonna click on the tiles first, shift, and then the main object that we want to join it to. And that means the one you click on last is the thing that's gonna have it added to. And then all we do because of ball tools is click control and plus, and now this is unioned to that. Now, mine has done this as an exact, which should be right. If yours hasn't done it as an exact, it's done as fast, just come over here and change it. So I've got this as one object and you'll see that it has now got the tiles have automatically been hidden here. And I can actually, while it's got this outline, I can hide that as well, because it's gonna be annoying. So next we're gonna to go to the next layer of things to connect. And we can actually do multiple, so I'm gonna shift click that, that, and then here, and here. So we've got all of those, because these are gonna to connect to this now main object including the tiles and we can use that spare tile as well select the object that we want to last control and plus and now everything should be combined together nicely again i can hide that and then i can hide all of these so h h okay i'm just hiding these bounding boxes that are coming up to say that that's where the object is just because otherwise you can click on them accidentally h so now everything's combined together here in one big mesh. And finally, we just need to add in our banisters there and there. So shift and select the final one, control and plus. And I can hide that bounding box and hide that bounding box. So now we should have one big object and we just need to apply these. Now, depending on the speed of your computer and how many things you put in to do it at once, this can take a while. Um, so it is sometimes a better idea to, once you do one group, click apply all and then click apply all for the next set and then the next set. But my computer should be able to handle this. And there we go. So now if I press G, this is one massive object with everything in it. 
And now comes the exciting bit because we're going to take out this chunk that we designed last time. So I'm just going to have one last look at it because I've moved things around a bit. It still looks like it's going to take out the bits that we want to take out. So click on that, then the object, and then we want control and this time minus to delete it. And you'll notice that's our bit where we've taken this nice chunk out that's going to be some sort of battle damage. Now we can still move things around. This is a little annoying at this point. Now mine has gone into this setting and yours might not automatically be here. So, I'd, But I'm just going to talk about how to change that. So if I select the object and go down here into object properties, I can change the viewport visibility. At the moment it's display as bounds. If I go to wire, then I can see where my object actually is. I can actually move this still and it will affect the mesh because I haven't applied this yet. So for example, I could press G and Z, move this down, which will increase the amount of damage that's here. So G and Z, I can either move that up or down, changing where the object is and how it's intersecting. Now again, this is quite processor heavy. So the more edges you've got on this, the more difficult it's gonna be to process. But that's looking quite nice at the moment. Quite happy with that. I'm actually going to notice here that little bit there is going to cause a slight problem. Okay, it's worth looking out for these tiny little bits there because that could come loose and get stuck on your printer bed or your printing film. So I'm going to move this forward, G, Y, and just get that bit so it's not going to be affected. It's going to be taken out. That looks better. Let's have a look around. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Pretty happy with that. Now if I hide this for a second, and we can see this is relatively large in terms of the faces. Now that doesn't particularly bother me. I was gonna put something over this, but just in case it does, if I bring back the visibility here, I can always add in the modifier properties, another subdivision surface to make it finer. And again, you'll see that's finer. I can even change the levels view and make that a little bit finer. Hide that, and that's now really smooth, uh, ready for us to add something in, like some texture with some basing material. We could add the texture in ourselves, but that's really not a good plan for most processors. Okay, you can use different systems in Blender to add lots of little debris, but honestly, it just causes more problems than it's worth. It is vastly better just to do it after the fact. So we need to add in our last bits. So we've got this main part and our tiles here. So I'm gonna select the tiles there, control and plus. I'm just gonna apply that straight away. Perfectly happy with that. And now we need to connect this main upper part. Let's hide that to our lower part, control and plus. Click apply all and let's hide that. So we now have one massive object that is our base. Now we do have some things here, like this section that's sort of sticking out. Okay, this isn't totally flat. And we've got some bits here. And it depends if you really want to neaten that up. It, it almost depends on if you care. Um, we can go on without this, but I generally quite like to do that just so everything's quite nice and neat. So all I'm gonna do is add in a cube, scale it up massively, S and Y to make it quite long. And I'm just going to press G and X, bring it over to sort of around here, duplicate it with Shift and D, press X to keep it on that, go over to this side for where the tiles are, where the tiles are ending, that'll do fine, I'm trying to avoid, I just came in here to check that I'm not cutting through one of these supports, that can sometimes give annoying results. That one actually is, so G and X. Let's go about here. And then I'll do one at the back as well. Actually, let's do that afterwards. So just that, select that, and the final one in the middle, Control and minus to get rid of those side bits. Look how much nicer that looks. Hide that, hide that. And then we'll do one at the back. So again, Shift A, Mesh, Cube. Scale it up loads. S and X to scale it on the X axis. That's way more than we need, but oh well, it doesn't really make a difference at this point. 
G and Y, bring it back to, let's say there. This one actually, I'm gonna make sure it's between two of these, G and Y, so that it's a little bit neater. There we go, that looks good. Shift select that one, Control minus. H to hide that and apply all so we've got this nice neat mesh. And that's looking pretty good for us taking these out of. Oh, I forgot! We've got one extra here. Luckily, that's not going to make a difference. So there, Shift Select, Control Plus, and then let's click Apply All and hide that. So we've got our scene now to cut our bases out of. So that's where we're going to leave it for today. Again, as always, file save as, click plus and save. I hope you found this video useful on how to bring these meshes together in a way that's going to print quite nicely. As always, if you have any questions about anything that came up in the video, please do leave them in the comment section and click on that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get informed when I post up any new videos.